Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, I want to talk about something that's actually kind of interesting, and it's a relatively recent discovery in human physiology. All right, so just kind of a random question. If somebody came up to you and said, hey, carbon monoxide is actually beneficial to you, um, you might say, that's BS. Um, there, you can actually kill yourself commit suicide by actually getting in your vehicle in a closed garage, rolling down the windows and turning on your car. Um, that's actually carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, people die every year due to that. So you would say that's BS. Well, it turns out that actually there's, it's the dose makes the poison, as my inorganic professor once says. And a little bit of carbon monoxide is actually present in you right now and actually plays some signaling roles. Okay, some vasodilation in very much the same way nitric oxide would. Now, obviously, nitric oxide, you can tolerate a much higher dosage of that. But carbon monoxide actually plays some role. Now, in the same way, it was recently discovered that hydrogen sulfide, H2S, the molecule that plays a role in the smell of rotten eggs, actually plays a role in human metabolism. Um, it actually is known to act as a signaling molecule and may play some roles in vasodilation as well. But if we have hydrogen sulfide, we have to have a way to get rid of it. And there's kind of an interesting pathway that I read about that you actually uh, allows you to get rid of hydrogen sulfide. And let's kind of go over it here. All right, so we have this hydrogen sulfide. It's going to first have a negative charge. It's just going to be in its deprotonated form. And the enzyme that's going to deal with this at first is called sulfide quinone reductase. And I'm going to show you just kind of the general mechanism of this here. All right, this is mitochondrial, by the way. So we're going to have an enzyme here, that's this enzyme, the reductase, that has an internal disulfide bond. The sulfide here is going to attack that sulfur and generate this thing right here. Okay, I've sort of neglected the charges here, but I think you get the idea. So what's going to happen is this sulfide is actually going to be in a thioperoxide linkage to this cysteine residue. So there's an FAD that's in the active site of this enzyme. This hydride right here on this sulfur is going to be ejected onto the FAD, and that's going to re generate reduced FAD, okay, which is going to then be used to reduce coenzyme Q, and then um, that's going to regenerate FAD, and the coenzyme Q, ubiquinol, can be used to power the electron transport chain. That's kind of weird. Novel uh, thought, but it's actually true. And then we have the re return of this oxidized disulfide bridge. Um, this cysteine attacks this one, expelling this sulfur. Now, when you expel this sulfur, it only has two lone pairs here to start, so this bond will then become a third lone pair. That means this sulfur is actually devoid of an octet. It only has six electrons. This, is, this will generate atomic sulfur, sulfur with a zero charge. This is atomic sulfur, okay, which actually does exist. It was once not thought to, but it does. Now, this molecule called sulfite, which is also present in humans, sulfite then just spontaneously attacks the sulfur and picks it up, and that generates thiosulfate. Okay? Thiosulfate will then transfer this sulfur atom right here to glutathione and this is done by thiosulfate sulfotransferase. Now when you do this you regenerate sulfite which can then be used to pick up more atomic sulfurs but in the process you generate a glutathione with an extra sulfur on it. This is called thioglutathione. Okay? There's another enzyme called sulfur dioxygenase which is going to oxidize this thioglutathione back into normal glutathione using molecular oxygen because what's happening is this sulfur atom right here that's creating the thioglutathione is going to be taken off and oxidized with atoms from molecular oxygen to make sulfite. And then there's an enzyme that we're a little more familiar with. Sulfite oxidase is going to oxidize sulfite into sulfate. Okay, sulfate is probably the most usable form that we have of sulfur um, because sulfate, as we know, can actually be packaged into um, molecules through the use of ATP sulfurylase, which we're going to cover in another video. But I just thought this was actually relatively interesting because it turns out you can actually get some use out of hydrogen sulfide. Um, in fact, some of the electrons from that can be used to power the electron transport chain. It's mitochondrial, so you can generate ubiquinol which can actually reduce complex three of the mitochondria. And then we can take that hydrogen sulfide, make atomic sulfur, but then we can ultimately get that into a usable form, sulfate. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I just found this actually relatively interesting. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe, and in the next videos we're actually going to go over how we assimilate sulfur in the form of sulfate into forms that we actually can use. Make sure to like this and subscribe. Thank you for watching this.